Sometimes it can seem like inspiration is just out of reach. You may wonder, how do so many artists find subjects to make art about? We assume they're tapped into something that we don't have access to, but here's the thing. There is an endless stream of inspiration that is just waiting for you to notice it. Once you understand how to see it, you'll be brimming with ideas. In this episode, I'm going to cover 10 tips on how to get inspired and in the zone when you're not feeling especially inventive. And you know, I have an important bonus at the end about something that you definitely want to avoid when getting inspired, which you can't afford to miss. Hello, love. My name is Jennifer Laurel Keller. I'm an acrylic and mixed media artist and instructor, and this is the Wild at Art Show. I always say that inspiration comes from two places, our inner world and our outer world. So I've decided to make two videos as a part of a mini series about each side of this coin. This episode is part two, where I'll be discussing how to get inspired from your outer world. If you missed part one, I've got you. It's linked below and also at the end screen. You don't have to watch them in order or click away until after this episode. In this video, I'm working on an 11 by 14 canvas panel, which I've titled Bright Beach. It's listed in my online shop and I'll link it below as always. And in this painting, I'm using some of the techniques that I discuss in this video so you can follow along and see where the process takes me. When it comes to getting inspired from your outer world, I'm talking about sourcing inspiration from the world around us and making it an adventure. In this list, I'm offering ideas about inspiration so that you can forge your own path and make more art. So grab something to take notes with. I'm going to ask you to do some brainstorming in your journal after this video and you'll want to be ready. So if you're excited about this topic, hit the like button and let's get the ideas rolling. Number one is to visit museums. Museums might sound like a no brainer, but as an artist, I don't get out to museums that often. I should, but I don't. So this tip is just as much for me as it is for you. But the thing is that when I was in the early stages of my art, I got blocked all the time. I used to just sit around and try to think up good ideas from the couch. And then I'd sit around and mope that my ideas weren't very good. But of course they weren't. I wasn't absorbing the world. And art museums are places where you're going to get top-notch creative immersion. They have big budgets and top names. These people are the best of the best and usually quite famous for a reason. If you can't get out to a museum, many of them have their collections online. You can Google museums with virtual tours and you'll find amazing collections. But if you can get out, please do so. It's a wonderful way to spend the day. The energy of an art museum is so enriching and energizing. You'll learn, you'll feel, you'll explore, and you'll see things that you never expected. So bring an art journal and sketch out some ideas while you're there. You'll be glad you did. Number two is visit art galleries. Art galleries are the little sibling to art museums. The names aren't quite as internationally famous, but you can get more insight into what's happening in your very own community. The staff will often come over and speak with you. You can ask questions. You can look up the artist statements and really take your time. You can also attend art receptions if you like. Usually one night a month, there's a show reception and you can get a chance to meet the artist or even possibly hear them give a talk about their art, which is very inspiring. Plus, it will give you the opportunity to put your most creatively chic outfit on and hit the town. Number three, your shopping and errand route. This is less chic, but don't discount your regular stomping grounds. Grocery stores and post offices may not seem very exciting, but if you look at the world through the eyes of an artist, you can find some interesting design elements out in the world. Look for elements that you think are interesting, such as architecture, signage, labels, murals, decor, textures, color. 
landscaping, furniture, patterns, and I bet you could get inspired. It's all about your attitude. Make a game out of it. Ask yourself, what could you incorporate into your artwork and jot it down or take a picture. Number four, vacations. Vacations are a gimme. So easy. Everyone feels inspired on vacation. Lots of art sells on vacation because of this. People are plucked out of their daily grind and given a new perspective of a beautiful place. That's why everyone fancies themselves as a professional photographer on Instagram when they're on vacation. You want to soak it up and make a record of the good times. So while you're out on vacation, take lots of pictures of big vistas, but also little details that you could use in your artwork. You probably already got a bunch of these shots already, so look at those in the meantime. Okay, we're about halfway through the list, and I just wanted to tell you that on the next episode of the Wild It Art Show, I'm going to cover the four stages of an art project that are super important to go through in order so that you can get the most satisfaction out of your art practice. If you want to catch that, be sure to double check that you're subscribed to my channel and hit the notification bell. Number five, other artists online. One word for you, Pinterest. If you don't have a Pinterest board for your art inspiration, it's time to get on it. Pinterest.com is a fantastic website for pinning inspiration to organized boards to save for later. It doesn't have to be images of artwork either. They could be references for compositions or style, color palettes and subjects. It's very addicting and fun, so have a blast with this. But while you're on there, definitely pin some art by other artists that you enjoy. It will suggest more work that's similar and you can get a good look at many examples of similar things. Really examine the work and think about how you would go about making something like it. Just don't make something too close to it because you'll run the risk of copyright infringement. And if you don't want to be on Pinterest, you can also look at Instagram or Google Images as well and find lots of really cool art. Number six, art books and magazines. Just like online, check the art section at a library or a bookstore. Bookstores are so inspiring. They're cool, they're casual, kind of tactile and interesting. So just like online, go surf the bookshelves and find something that inspires you. Take a close look and see what part of these examples you could bring into your repertoire. I have four more tips for you plus the bonus, but first I have a question. I'm curious, what is a place that you can visit soon where you can get inspired? Preferably somewhere that won't take too much effort. Once you think of it, let me know down in the comments. It might help other folks in the community. Number seven, art collectives or meetups. If you can find a place where artists are gathering to boost each other up, join that group. I can't tell you how valuable a group of artists can be to each other. When I used to work at the art supply store, we would nerd out all day long and talk about all things art, which really helped me get a grasp of what fired me up. You can look on Facebook groups or nextdoor.com for meetups as well. And if you still can't find anything, be the first in your community to organize it. Number eight, do an art studio tour or an internship. If you can go visit an artist studio, hop on the chance. I bet many artists in your area would welcome you in. Being in creative spaces where the magic happens is very inspiring. And if you really wanna go all in, you could offer to be an assistant or an apprentice, which could be a fascinating experience. Number nine, take a class in person. If you wanna fire up your creativity quickly, and not have to overthink how you'll make it, join a class. Classes are a very streamlined way to get results. Art teachers are out there wishing and hoping for signups for their classes and they would be thrilled to teach you. Just be sure to learn from someone who has good referrals 
and whose work you actually like because not all teachers teach all subjects. We all have our specialty and plus you'll get real-time feedback for the fastest results. Number 10, take an online class. This is something that I can really speak to because I'm an online teacher. Online classes are wonderful because you can watch from home during your downtime. You can watch the content as many times as you like. You get the best view right over the teacher's shoulder and you can watch it through once and follow along the second time. You can communicate with the teacher and the other students in the comments and even upload pictures of your projects for feedback. It's pretty cool and very flexible. You can learn from teachers all over the world, which broadens your options way more than taking a class in person. Hopefully you're getting some good ideas. We still have the bonus coming up with a big warning about something you should avoid when getting inspired. So stay tuned for that. And if you're interested in painting and mixed media, you can learn a lot in my Skillshare classes. I have all of the information for those on my website, which I always have linked below. I've made about 30 online classes for Skillshare, and in my review of the day, I want to share this from Juno, who took my online class, Overcome Artist Block, and Reclaim Your Creative Power. In that class, I help you bust through the four main areas of Artist Block. Juno says the class exceeded her expectations and went on to say, I honestly forced and dragged myself into this course because I'm so unmotivated, uninspired, and I don't want to do anything, but now I can't stop writing ideas. I can't thank you enough. I can't wait to draw these. That is awesome, Juno. Thank you so much. I'm glad it helped. All right, now for our bonus tip. This is important, folks. The bonus is avoid people who don't understand art. Some people don't have an interest in talking about art. I call them brick walls. Either they don't get it or they don't think they're educated enough to talk about art, which is baloney. Of course, I think that everyone should feel welcomed into art discussions. It's not just for the elite, but nonetheless, some people just don't care. You might think that you're onto something really hot and you probably are, but if you bring it up to a brick wall, it can drain you of all your enthusiasm. It's like if someone who loved football came to me and started talking about their favorite team, I would probably take the wind out of their sails because I just don't care. <laughs> I wish I did, but all I can really say in those instances is that's nice or wow or interesting. I have nothing to add. When it comes to your inspiration, it's like a little baby bird that you're trying to take care of so it can fly out of the nest. You can't do this with a stray cat waiting down below, or in our case, a brick wall. These folks don't get it, and they'll give you all of the wrong answers. <laughs> they might even hurt your feelings unknowingly. It's really not even fair to ask their opinion because it's so far out of their element and you're probably going to be a little tender about it. So take your ideas to your fellow creators and they will give you the feedback you crave. If you're looking for more inspiration, I'm going to leave a playlist and a suggested video for you here. Thank you for watching. Much love.